A man who was a simple merchant. A man who became a warrior. A man who became the first ever king of Slavs. A man who created the first ever Slavic empire. This is a story of Samo, a humble Frankish merchant who became the very first recorded Slavic king and formed one of the most powerful empires in the history of Central Europe. The early Western Slavic history has been initially mentioned in a chronicle of Fredegar, a Frankish chronicle that was probably written in Burgundy in 7th century AD. The book contains over 30 manuscripts and it dates events which begins with the creation of the world and ends in 642 AD, with few references to events up to 658 AD and additional sections written in 768 AD. On top of it, we have numerous excavation sites with the traditional signs depicting certain events in Central Europe. After the fall of Gepid Empire, a Germanic tribal hegemon in Central Europe, Slavic tribes settled around the Carpathian mountain range, stretching from northern parts of nowadays Germany all the way to the Carpathian basin in the southeast of nowadays Hungary. History of early Western Slavic tribes is riddled with this unity of ethnically similar people who were sandwiched between Frankish Empire and Hunnic steppe tribe of Avars from the southeast. Avars were a nomadic tribe whose power varied across their territory, which was dominantly in the Carpathian Basin. They managed to subdue several Slavic tribes, most of which had to pay tribute in the form of money and slaves to Avars. This is where we get the first records from the Chronicle. Vens, which was a name for Slavs, have been fighting Avars for a long time. When Avars and the army led an attack on a nation, they were building their assembled army to defend the camps. But when fought, if the victory sided with them, Avars then attacked to seize the loot, but if the Wends were defeated, backed by Hunic auxiliary troops, they regained the strength. The Avars therefore called them Befulkas, because of their combat encounter and forming double battle widths. These are the most accurate translations of the Chronicle. We can deduce that the Avar relationships with Slavic tribes varied. Tribes in the western part of Kaganet suffered the most as mentioned in the next chapter of the Chronicle. Each year, Avars came to the Slavs to spend winter with them. Then, they took the wives and daughters of the Slavs and slept with them. And, among other mistreatments, the Slavs were also forced to pay levies to the Avars. But the second generation of the Slavs from mixed Avar marriages could not finally endure this oppression anymore and refused obedience to the Avars and began, as already mentioned, a rebellion. Now, when the Slavic army went against the Avars, a merchant named Samo accompanied them, and so Samo's bravery proved itself in the wonderful waves, and a huge mass of Avars fell to the sword of the Slavs. Samo, originally a Celtic name, belonged to a Frankish merchant who was exceptionally wise and intelligent. Samo was originally from a Frankish province of Senonago, which could be present-day Soignes in Belgium or present-day Sens in France. He was an exceptional merchant, trading weapons and other goods all across the eastern part of Frankish Empire and Western Slavic tribes. Samo was very well aware about ongoing conflict between the Avar Kaganet and Western Slavs. Therefore, he organized a merchant group trip to the Danube River with the goal of supplying weapons to Slavs so they could stand a chance against the well-equipped and militarized enemy. We don't know what really happened on this journey, but somewhere along the way, Samo decided he was going to join the Slavs in a fight against Avars. When Slavs attacked Avars, Samo was in the army. He was exceptionally brave in a battle, and Slavs recognizing his wisdom, bravery and intellect decided that he should be their quote-unquote Rex, as mentioned in the Chronicle, which means a king. Finally, having a leader meant that several other Slavic tribes and principalities joined the insurrection against Avars, further uniting the tribes under one banner. The Chronicle mentioned that after Samo started leading Slavs into the battle, the Slavs started defeating Avars on numerous occasions, which made more Slavic principalities and tribes join Samo and recognized him as their king. Samo built a solid political leadership by forging alliances with numerous influential Slavic families. He is reported to have married at least 12 Slavic women, 
who bore him 22 sons and 15 daughters. His involvement in a long-distance trade, winning campaigns against powerful adversaries of Avars, secured him a considerable wealth, high status and respect among Slavic nobility. The result of these factors was the formation of a Samos Empire, which stretched all the way from the eastern Germany through Czech Republic, Slovakia, eastern Austria into the lands of Slovenes and touching the borders of Croatia. It was a fastly growing empire, which was slowly becoming a force to be reckoned with, eventually leading to an inevitable clash and showdown with the famed Frankish Empire. Samos Empire was on the crossroads of several well-known trade routes, such as Amber Road and Danube Road. Samo, who used to be a merchant, now acting as a king, made the best out of it, using his experience, wisdom and knowledge to facilitate the trade across the Central Europe. Due to the empire's strategic position, Frankish traders often passed through it and had often good relations with the Slavic tribes, especially due to the Samos background as being a Frank himself. However, Frankish Empire started becoming increasingly aware of the spreading influence of Samo and his subjects, especially when it came to his respectability, resources and power. All came boiling down in 631 AD when a group of Frankish merchants were robbed and killed by Slavs. Frankish King Dagobert I of Merovingian dynasty immediately sent an emissary to Samo, whose name was Sicaria. Sicaria demanded that Samo send him those Slavs who had killed and robbed a great number of Frankish merchants. Samo agreed that such criminals should be punished, but only after due process had determined who they were and why, or if, they had committed such crimes. Samo simply stated his intention to hold an investigation so that justice could be done in this dispute, as well as in others that had arisen between them in the meantime. Sicario acted rude and at one time behaved as if Samo and Slavs were subjects of Dagobert, after which Samo dismissed the emissary who immediately reported to Dagobert that Samo and Slavs are refusing to collaborate. Dagobert seized upon this refusal as a breach of treaty and assembled a large army against the Slavs. Franks devised a plan of three-front attack, leading small diversionary forces from the north and south, while the bulk of the army was marching straight in the middle through nowadays Czech Republic. South and north forces had an early success, however, Samo acted swiftly and gathered a large force of his own and met Dagobert's main bulk of the army at the Battle of Vogadisburg. To this day, it is disputed where Vogadisburg really was. Some of the sources mention it could be at Bratislava, capital of Slovakia, which names in the past was Pressburg and therefore had the same suffix. There are also castles in Czech Republic where historians claim it could happen there, or even somewhere in a present eastern Austria. Regardless of the place, we know that it was one of the bloodiest battles of the era. The fighting lasted three full days and at the end, Slavs, led by Samo, defeated the Frankish invaders, decimating their forces and driving the survivors from the field. As a result of the Frankish defeat, several Slavic groups that were subordinate to the Franks were released from their servitude and a local leader named Dervan declared his loyalty and submission and that of his people to Samo. After the victory against the Franks, the position of power in Europe quickly changed. Samo started invading and raiding the eastern frontier of the Frankish realm on a frequent basis. Concerned about the Slavic raids, the Frankish authorities appointed Radulf, the Duke of Thuringia, with the task of protecting the Frankish border against Samo's threat. Radulf was initially successful in defending the Frankish borders against Samo. But sometimes around 640 AD, an internal Frankish political struggle forced Radulf to battle against other Frankish groups. The Chronicle of Fredegar states that Radulf then sought to strengthen his position by forming an alliance with Samo, which means that Samo's power and prestige was still significant at the time, nine years after his significant victory at Vogadisburg. No Frankish force could stand against him 
and he secured his kingdom against all future attempts at outside control or invasion for the next 18 years. We don't know much about what happened after this time and all the way to the Samo's death, but we can only speculate based on the historical data that Samo just fully consolidated his power, strengthened his empire even more and made sure that the empire will be still well equipped to defend itself after his death. However, as history often shows, we rarely see an heir of an exceptional king who can manage to keep the empire together. Therefore, Samo died in 658 AD and the kingdom he had built died with him. Despite his influence, power and wealth, none of his 22 sons succeeded him as a king. This may suggest that within the political structure of Slavs, rule was not inherited, but granted based upon personal merit. Samo's sons seem to have lacked their father's skills, and no successor to the kingdom he founded is recorded. The empire was further split into powerful principalities and became disunited once again. This power vacuum was quickly used by Avars, who recaptured some of their lost territory and re-established their dominance over the Slavic tribes, with only a few powerful principalities holding off Avar and Frankish invaders. We don't know much about these principalities and we can only speculate that chroniclers probably meant the Principality of Nitra and Principality of Moravia, which some 160 years later formed Greater Moravia. Samo's individual character held his people together and his skills in leadership and battle allowed them to prosper, but these virtues were not passed on to his successors. He is remembered today as a great king and charismatic leader who united his people in their fight for freedom and succeeded, even if only for a limited time.